I wanted to show you a few things that I've been finding as I've been building all these Raspberry Pi projects using the PCIe slot on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. A lot of people have been sending me projects on Twitter. Um, I actually have a board here that I'm testing that I'm going to show off uh, hopefully sometime around Christmas. And uh, there are some really cool projects that I've been documenting in my Raspberry Pi PCIe device GitHub uh, repository. This website that I have is right now I'm putting all the cards that I'm testing. There's a link to the card, a link to the issue that I tested in, and I'm still testing these GPUs. I'm getting very close. I'm trying to set up a remote debugger because one of the, the Radeon RX 550 is having some issues uh, when it hits the doorbell init. So if you want to follow all these cards, please check out this website. It's pypci.jeffgilling.com. And each, each card that I'm testing has an issue that goes along with all the little things that I'm testing on and all the little bugs I hit, uh, the process for getting it working. So if you want a preview of some of the videos that are going to com be coming out soon, follow those issues. Uh, but on this project uh, in the issue tracker, I actually have an issue on here where I'm documenting all of the neat new projects and accessories that I've been finding. So first of all, uh, there's, this, there's this little card here that um, is a daughter card for the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 that is in the same footprint as a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 Model B. So you could put it in certain cases in enclosures, not in the official case because there's things like this USB-C port that stick out in a different place, uh, but it uses USB-C for power. It has a full 40-pin GPIO header. It has a status LED, micro SD. This is a great little uh, board for flashing EMMC modules or stacking the modules if you want to build a cluster like I do. I'm actually going to be doing uh, something like that soon, so stay tuned for that and consider subscribing. There's also projects like the Turing Pi 2. I did a whole series of videos on the Turing Pi 1 setting up a K3S cluster on it. Uh, but the Turing Pi 2 is going to have a custom case that you can buy for it. But th the basic idea is a board, uh, this board that will have four slots for uh, compute module 4s, uh, a micro PCIe slot, so you could put Wi-Fi 6 on it, you could put um, a, an NVM, NVMe drive, you could put a SATA drive, it'll have SATA connectors built in. Um, all these different things are really cool to make a board that will uh, actually be a competent cluster. The, the Turing Pi version 1 was good, but not great, and it had a lot of issues just due to the limitations of the Compute Module 3 Plus. It also will have a cool heatsink. Uh, I haven't seen a production model of this, but having a, a great heatsink like this would be awesome for passive cooling for the Compute Module 4. It doesn't need cooling if it's all open air, but if you put it in a case, it's good to have a heatsink to spread that heat out and let it cool a little bit better. Um, also with this cool daughter card uh, for the Compute Module that lets it stack vertically easily inside this, this uh, case. So that's the Turing Pi 2, another cool case. Uh, another cool project that I saw, this was right after I started publishing my first videos on the Compute Module 4, um, the Guy Danish on GitHub. This project, the CM4 Mat X, is micro ATX, uh, a motherboard for the Compute Module 4 that would fit in any ATX style case or a, a mini ITX case, which is awesome. Um, maybe not a mini ITX, I think a, a micro ATX. Um, but it would fit in any standard case, and the idea behind this board is it would have two full-size HDMI ports so that you could have two displays. You can drive uh, three PCIe cards using a PCIe switch, and those cards could fit right into the case, so it would be a turnkey solution for building things like a Pi NAS with uh, a Wi-Fi 6 or a Pi NAS with 10 gig Ethernet. Obviously, the, the PCIe bus on the Compute Module 4 is limited to 5 gigabits maximum theoretical throughput on its 1x lane. Uh, but it's a really cool project because it takes, uh, it takes the, the board setup that I am using and uh, it, you know, usually I have something plugged in vertically and it's plugged in over the side and it's kind of taped together. Um, but this would allow you to put Pi projects straight into a standard PC case, which is awesome because you can get those used or cheap, or sometimes you might have one laying around that you could throw a Raspberry Pi project into. That fits right into the projects that I'm working on because a lot of them I just want to have a better hardware setup for them. Uh, there's also, um, this is from Gumsticks. Uh, they're building this, this alternative I.O. board. It's a little bit smaller than the official uh, the official Compute Module 4 I.O. board, uh, but it also has uh, a different layout too, 
which is a little more compact and, and might be nice. Um, uh, but you can see it, it has the, the camera connectors and the display connectors and a full size HDMI and all that kind of stuff. So another option there, um, I think they're also building a vertical adapter that will let the CM4 plug into, yeah, here it is. We'll let the CM4 plug into a CM3 compatible device. This might not be 100% compatible. We'll see. I, I haven't seen one of these in use yet, um, but it might not be. It might not allow you to plug it straight into something like the Turing Pi V1. And even if you can, devices like the Turing Pi V1 have uh, a backplane that's not optimized for the Compute Module 4. So you'd miss out on some features here and there. But it's a cool solution because you could put a faster Pi into a slot. Uh, where the Compute Module 3 was used, or the, any of the older Compute Modules, and it has a Coral TPU in, involved. I don't do too much with AI or ML, but uh, you know, if you do, that's, that's a cool little uh, device to uh, adapt. Another thing I saw that was cool was, and there's a project called the PyCube, which is the Pi keyboard. Uh, it's a keyboard uh, with a Pi in it, kind of like the Pi 400, but in this case, it would be uh, using the, the Compute Module 4. So it's, it's another cool form factor. Um, and the idea here would be it's a mechanical keyboard with replaceable keys and things like that. So I, I know a lot of people after the Pi 400 was introduced, they're like, so what about a mechanical keyboard? Can I replace this and that? This would be more of the, the hacker solution to that, that issue. And it, it's an interesting form factor. Um, I don't think it would sell in the millions or anything like that, but it is a cool form factor and a, a neat way to use the Pi uh, Compute Module 4. Another thing that I found was the Stereo Pi version 2, which is a stereo camera for stereoscopic photography or video where you can have 3D vision and things like that. Also pretty, pretty cool for things like robotics. The idea being it, it's just a, a board that has a 40 pin GPIO header network, USB, USB-C for power, two camera connectors so you can have two Raspberry Pi cameras, either H quali high quality or the, the standard ones with a Compute Module 4 plugged into the bottom of it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Another one I found is this project from MebsT on Reddit. I actually mentioned this in my NAS, uh, Pi NAS video that I had a uh, SATA card with four drives. Um, this is kind of like the board that I would want to have because it could be powered up inside of a custom case that's a lot smaller. And, and that board's footprint is, again, a lot smaller than this official I.O. board. And it, you know, the I.O. board, sometimes I might rag on it a little bit. This is not meant to be integrated into your project. This is meant to be a board that you can use to test out all the features and functionality. So it's considerably larger than, than what you'd want in the end. Um, so this, this Compute Module 4, uh, little board, it would be used in a NAS in an enclosure like this that would have four hard drives in it and some sort of backplane that lets you plug the hard drives into SATA connectors. And there's a project for that on GitHub as well, CM4 NAS under the MEBS, uh, under MEBS uh, namespace here. So a lot of these projects, a lot of them are in concept phase or some of them are early prototype. Uh, another one that I found that was really an interesting idea is, a, I think this is a 1U rack case where the Pi, the Compute Module 4s would all be uh, put into little blades and connect to a backplane like this. Uh, and that one is using a 3D printed uh, little case. This is from Uptime Lab. I, I believe they're on Instagram and Twitter, uh, but you can, you can see that. All these things are linked in the, in the issue. So if you wanna follow any of these progress, go to that issue that I'm looking at here and get these links. Um, another one that I just found out about yesterday is the Pi Pionora, I guess like Sayonara, Pionora or something like that. Um, this is kind of like a, a maker's board, which is cool. It, it has uh, the headers that are easier to plug into using uh, the male DuPont connectors. And you can pop the CM4 on top. It has two USB-C ports. One can be used for powering the Pi and any other devices connected to it. And there's another one that can pro provide pass-through power for the um, what's on the bottom, an M2 slot, if you want to have higher powered connections through here. Uh, this, this picture has a coral, again, the, the little TPU for machine learning and, and AI, uh, but you could also plug in other devices like NVMe drives and things. And this is something a lot of people have asked about. They said, can we get a CM4 with an NVMe drive and boot off of it and have a super fast Pi? which I would love. Uh, right now, the one limitation on that is that the Pi doesn't support booting from NVMe unless you use uh, a hacky solution to have a micro SD card do the initialization 
of the process, and then it passes off the boot to the NVMe storage, which is possible and, and doable, but um, I really want to just have no micro SD in the loop anymore, uh, but that's not quite possible. A lot of these cards have switches on them for uh, configuring different options on the Pi, rebooting the Pi, doing things like that. I, I wanted to show these things just because I'm really excited about the possibilities here with this new form factor and the ability that it exposes the PCI Express uh, interface directly. So many new options are coming out and I, I know that there's some more. There's a couple I can't talk about and there's also some other ones that I've had in my head that I know some other people are actually hacking on and working on right now, soldering things together in their own workshops. And um, it, the next year or two, when these things are finally able for people to buy them in quantity, uh, we're gonna see some really cool devices with the Raspberry Pi integrated into things. And uh, along those lines, I know that there's probably already some people who have commented on in this video saying that, uh, you know, if, well, that's great for you. You have, a, you have a, a board and you have a compute module and all that. And I do, this was a pre-production model that was sent to me from Raspberry Pi for testing and, uh, and verification and things like that. And so I've been, <laughs> I've been very careful with this, making sure that Redshirt Jeff never gets his hand on it because uh, these are in short supply and I've, I've been looking around every week. I placed an order on launch day for two more IO boards and two more Raspberry Pis, I think four gigabyte models. Um, and they still haven't shipped. I contacted, I've contacted five different uh, distributors and all of them have said the same thing. Basically, we hoped to get more stock in in November and then it was moved back to December and now it's looking like it could be early January. So I don't know when these things are gonna ship. I just know that the Raspberry Pi Foundation, since they introduced the CM4, the Pi 400, and the OS distributions and things, they've been very busy. And it's, I guess it's just been hard for them to manufacture all these things and have high output. But the cool thing is you can find the light version of the Pi Compute Module 4 from a few suppliers right now. Uh, they are selling the one and two gigabyte models with no Wi-Fi and no Bluetooth and no EMMC. Uh, so if you just want the speed of the CM4 and the form factor and want to start testing it with some of these other boards, uh, some of these boards are being released under the open hardware uh, license. I know that the, uh, the, the CM4 micro ATX board is going to be under that license. I believe that the, uh, this board down here, the Pi, Pi Unora, is going to be released under that license. So. The cool thing about that is you could download those plans and you could have it manufactured by a PCB manufacturer or if you want to set everything up yourself, you could do that. Uh, but, but you can build these yourself and as long as you have a way to reflow the, the circuit in your oven or something like that, or you can, you can have a manufacturer do it for you, uh, you can have these devices and start using them with a Pi CM4 and build your own projects. So it's really exciting. I have more videos coming on other PCIe devices, but please feel free to follow these issues. I, I do all my work in the open, and that's, that's one of my favorite things about uh, what I've been able to do on this YouTube channel. Uh, people, can, people can follow what I'm doing as I'm doing it before a video comes out. So, you know, if, if you want to have spoilers, uh, for instance, this uh, Asus PCAC51 PC adapter, I haven't been able to get that working. You would know that if you check out this issue. Uh, but if you don't follow uh, the issue, you'll, you can be surprised in the video when you find that out. Obviously, if you just heard me say that, you, you won't be surprised anymore. But um, you can follow my progress on here. I, I continually develop in the open because that's just the way I am. And I'm so happy to be able to do that, especially as people are supporting my channel on uh, Patreon and GitHub sponsors. So please uh, feel free to click the sponsor button up here and sponsor me on these things so that I can keep doing all this testing and producing these videos for you. And uh, with Christmas coming up and with a new baby on the way in mid-January, I might have a couple weeks there where things are a little slow, but know that I'm okay. Uh, well, having another baby in the house uh, might make things a little crazy, but I'm mostly okay. And uh, I will see you next time. Until then, I'm Jeff Gearling.